We have a very, very special assembly this morning. We have a real live author with us today, Mr. who is also the parent of Constantine. This is Nista's class. Constantine, where are you <laughs> Okay. All right. Have a seat, everybody. Thank you. All right. So, we all know our school model of kindness follows caring, or KFC. And we all know about our no bullying rule. So this morning, um, Mr. Katsouris wrote uh, several books, but one book is about uh, Lukumi and the schoolyard bully. And I know that uh, you have heard some of his books in your uh, classrooms from your teachers having read them to you. But also, uh, I want you to just pay very, very close attention to um, publishing that Mr. Kutsouris is going to talk about. He has published many books, and I know that many of you are working on writing your own books and having them published. So um, he's going to give you some tips and um, also talk about uh, anti-bullying. So uh, please sit up, give him your full attention, and enjoy uh, Mr. Kutsouris. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Cherry. Thank you to all the, uh, the faculty who's here. And thank you to all of you, to the students, because it is you that I write these books for. Uh, the Lakumi books are all about teaching kids, just like you, different lessons in life so that you can then go and make a difference, not only in your lives, but in the lives of others. And before we get started, we have a DVD which will show you a little bit about the Lakumi series. The Lakumi books are now nine years old and we want to show you a little bit about what we've done with the book series. So, look out for us. Lukumi's Good Deeds by Nick Katsouris. It was the first day of school. Lukumi was riding the bus when all of a sudden it came to a complete stop. Lukumi saw crossing guard Gus helping an elderly giraffe across the street. Lukumi called out to Gus and said, That was very nice of you. And Gus replied, Helping others is a wonderful thing. Make someone smile. Do a good deed. Lend a hand to a friend in need. Whatever you do, whatever you say, do something nice for someone today. Make someone smile. Take it slow. actually a, a Greek word, it means sweet, and comes from a type of Greek candy. And I came up with the idea one day when I was in the kitchen with my wife, I said, could you hand me that box of Lukumi? Lukumi, I called her Lukumi, just came out. And I said, wouldn't that make a cute name for a children's book character? Dreams really do come true. I freaked out. When I hung up the phone, I literally screamed. I was just like speechless. These two nine-year-olds from Great Neck are winners of a national competition where children were asked to draw what they want to be when they grow up. Sophie said Mayor is shooting for the stars. I want to be a rover engineer. I want to work at NASA and design robots. And Lionel Lee set high goals. Soccer is a really fun sport and it teaches me to cooperate. The contest was based on Nick Katsouris' children's book series, Lakumi. Thousands of children across the country entered. Only three would be chosen to win their dream day. And the hard work paid off. Sophie went to NASA, where she met with rover engineers and sat with them inside Mission Control. Aspiring soccer star Lionel got to kick it with New York's professional soccer team, the Red Bulls. I feel really happy and excited. The message to all you kids out there? Your dreams are possible and that if you really work hard, then you can be what you want to be. So dream big, even if those dreams seem out of this world. Carol Amadell, News 4 New York. Entertainment Tonight in high definition. Miss Jennifer Aniston playing a giraffe. That's also real. She's the voice of Daisy the giraffe in the audio version of the children's book, Lakumi's Good Deeds, out today. Her father John also lent his voice to the project, marking the first time they worked together. 
The book by Nick Katsouris is about teaching kids that you can make others happy by doing nice things. Picking up trash, saying good morning, or just simply smiling. Simple words and gestures that encourage others to keep going. It's also what a children's author wants to instill in children right here in the Mid-South. Some of the youngest patients in the Mid-South welcomed a distraction Tuesday morning. Author Nick Katsouris was the host for Storytime at St. Jude for National Make a Difference Day. Katsouris says he wants to inspire children of all ages to know they make a difference in the lives of others by just doing simple gestures. Like all these wonderful people at St. Jude are doing here to make a difference in all the patients' lives and their families' lives. And our next guest, Gloria Gaynor, the Grammy Award winning artist and queen of disco is here. Nice to see you, Gloria. Oh, and she's shadowed by Lakumi back there in the background. Thanks, Lakumi. It was then that Lakumi realized a gift really is a thought your heart creates and need not cost a penny. A gift can be anything that you wish made for one or many. A thoughtful act, a handmade card, a delicious cookie or cake. The perfect gift is straight from the heart. Whatever it is you make, the end. alter ego, and Kat Cora found out the recipes that make Hollywood's hottest stars feel like a kid again for the Cooley Celebrity Cookbook. Please welcome Kat Cora. Yes. 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 So, you brought us all these childhood recipes from our favorite uh, celebrities. How'd you get this all together? Well, Nickasaurus, who's done several of these books, it's all about teaching kids lessons of life. So, Lakumi's, this book is really about teaching kids that the secret ingredient to life is never give up. So, when you're cooking, it is difficult, or you have difficulties in life, that's the secret ingredient. What we have here is we've got all these recipes. I mean, we have recipes from Justin Timberlake, we have recipes from Taylor Swift, from Oprah, to, um, I mean, just so many celebrities that just came out. And this book, I have to say, the proceeds are going to St. Jude Hospital, which we all know is excellent. We got Alan DeGeneres right. in there. Sandra Day's Ricotta, Sandra Day's Mini Mexican Pizzas, Mark Wahlberg, Potato Tone, and you, this is your the cat. That's me. Joan Aniston, Cinnamon yeah. Toast, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there you go. I'm not in here, I'm not. Oprah and her. Oh, Beyonce's in there. Look, Oprah! And they're all really favorite childhood memories. You know, we have Nicole Kidman who talks about rice pudding, was something she did with her mom all the time, and now she cooks it with her own kids. Jay Leno is his Uncle Louis' chicken wings, marinara, and he says that his uncle told him, someday you'll make dinner for 20 guys, and this is what you'll make. The proceeds go where again? To St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. He's here today with his wonderful eight-year-old son, Dean, who I've already fallen in love with. Why is this Beyonce's favorite guacamole? Because it's, uh, it's healthy, it's tasty, it's easy to make, and she said she used to love to eat it as a kid. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital.
uh, so now you have a little bit of an idea of what the Lukumi book series is all about. And as I mentioned, it's all about trying to make a difference in your lives and the lives of others. And I'm here today to talk to you about two specific topics. One is bullying awareness. And two, I understand you're all writing books this year, so I'm very excited to talk to you about writing. Because writing is what got me started in this from the beginning. I always loved to write from when I was your age. And while my father wanted me to be a lawyer, which I ended up becoming, I also wanted to write. So it was his sister, my Aunt Kay, who always encouraged me to write. So if you find somebody that wants to encourage you to write, listen to them and listen to their encouragement. Um, unfortunately, my aunt passed away over 20 years ago, but every time I put out a new book, I always think of her because it was she that taught me to believe in myself and that I really could be an author someday. And she taught me that lesson. So when I was your age, I used to write. I kept a journal. I entered writing contests, essay contests. I wrote for the school newspaper in grammar school. I wrote for it in high school. I wrote for it in college. When I got out of law school, I wrote a 400-page novel. Um, and then my life all changed one day when I was in the kitchen with my wife, who's here today, and someone had brought us back a box of Lukumi candy from Greece. Lukumi candy is a jelly candy with powdered sugar on top. And I've got to be honest with you, I never really cared for the taste of Lukumi candy, but I figured, let me try it again after all these years. So I saw the box in the kitchen and I asked my wife, could you please hand me that box of Lukumi Lukumi. I called her Lukumi. It just came out of my mouth. And we looked at each other and I said, wouldn't that make a cute name for a children's book character? So over the next couple of years, I had some fun. I wrote some ideas down. And then our son, Constantine, was born. And I said, you know what? I need to do this not only for myself, but also for him. And you'll see what I talk about writing later. Start off by doing the writing for yourself and then do the writing for others to help others. So I decided to write this book about Lugumi, who gets lost at the airport and wanders off, and the lesson is never wander off alone. And I had so much fun, and I started doing book signings and going to schools, and the New York Times wrote about us, and it was, it was really thrilling. And then I thought to myself, my aunt was right. Believe in yourself, and your dreams will come true. My dream of becoming an author came true. So then I decided to do something about that message. And I started another book called Growing Up with Lukumi. You saw about the, the contest that we do every year. So Growing Up with Lukumi teaches you that if you believe in yourself and you work hard, you can achieve anything that you want to do when you grow up, including being an author, or being an actor, or being owning your own business, or whatever it is that you want to do. So after that book came out, we did that contest. And you saw little Sophie. She was eight years old, and she wanted to be a Mars rover engineer. Now, I have to tell you, I didn't even know what that was. So I was hoping that she was going to lose the contest, because I didn't know how I was going to make her dream day come true. But sure enough, all the judges on our panel picked her as the top choice. So I called NASA blindly. I didn't know anyone there. And that, that, this is another lesson I want to teach you, is that Never think that anything is out of your reach, okay? If you have an idea, go for it. So I called NASA, and I said, I have this eight-year-old girl. She wants to be a Mars rover engineer. What can you do for me? And they said, you know what? We love this idea. We are landing a spaceship on Mars Memorial Day weekend of 2008. I thought I was hearing things. And they said, come out to Mission Control, and little Sophie can sit in Mission Control and watch the Phoenix spaceship land on Mars. It was unbelievable. It was like being in the middle of a science fiction film. But sure enough, then we had another uh, dream day where little Lionel, another eight-year-old kid from Great Neck, Long Island, he wanted to be a soccer star, and he got to play soccer with the New York Red Bulls at Giant Stadium. A third little girl wanted to be a TV chef. We got her to cook with Rachel Ray on the set of her show. So remember, believe in yourself. So when I was at NASA, things always happened for a reason, I believe. So I was out in California at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, and I had lunch that day with John Aniston. Now, you, your parents may know him from the soap opera, The Days of Our Lives. He's also the father of Jennifer Aniston, who you may have heard of. And John said, you know what? I want to be part of your next project. So that was it. That was my opportunity. And I said, you know what? How about you 
and Jennifer Aniston narrate the next Lagumi book on CD? And sure enough, they said yes, and I, I couldn't believe it. So Jennifer narrates the next book on CD, and that's Lagumi's Good Deeds, which I know is very important to the school because you have your program KFC, right? Kindness Follows Caring. The Lukumi's Good Deeds book is all about teaching kids to do good deeds. And you saw some of the good deeds at the end of our video. Every October, we have Make a Difference with Lukumi Day, where we have over 20,000 kids go out on one day and do a good deed. So I hope you'll all participate this October. Who's going to do a good deed in October? OK, great. Um, so it was also with that book that I got introduced to St. Jude Children's Hospital. I don't know if you see around the holidays, you may see Jennifer Aniston doing commercials for St. Jude Children's Hospital on TV. She's the one that introduced me to the hospital, and that's why the proceeds from our books get donated to St. Jude. Um, so when that book came out, I went to the hospital, and they're in Memphis, Tennessee. And I remember being very busy right before I left for my, with, my, uh, with my law job. I said, oh my goodness, what am I doing? I have to get on a plane and go down to Memphis, Tennessee tomorrow. But you know what? I went down and it was one of those experiences that changed my life. Um, I did an event for all the patients, similar to what I'm doing today for you. And there was one little girl there in particular. She was a year old. Her name was Olivia. And unfortunately, because of her treatments, she didn't have any hair on her head. But she had a beautiful headband with a daisy on it. You may have seen her picture in the video. It looked like a flower was growing out of her head. And it was so adorable. We spent about two hours together that day. And then after I left, for the next two years, I thought of Olivia often, but never heard whatever happened to her. I always wondered what happened to Olivia. And then it was a Thursday night at midnight in 2011. I said, let me check my Facebook page. I haven't checked Facebook in a few days. So I went on, and sure enough, that picture that you saw on the screen of Lukumi with Olivia from our event appeared on my screen. I thought I was hallucinating. I didn't know where this picture came from. And I started to read, and her grandmother posted that picture there and said to me that little Olivia was in the hospital. And unfortunately, she had a tumor in her eye. But thank God she had successful surgery and she was going to be okay. So I was very relieved to hear that. But I'm still wondering, this, this granddaughter of hers is in the hospital. Why is she reaching out to me after two years? So I continued to read, and her grandmother wrote that over the last two years, there was a strong possibility that Olivia could go blind from the tumor, and that it was very important to her parents that Olivia read and see as many books as possible so she would always remember the pictures. And then she told me that not a night went by since we met two years ago at St. Jude when Olivia didn't ask to have one of the Lukumi books read to her. And that's what this book series is about. It's all about reaching out and making a difference and just touching other people's lives. And that's the message I want to give to you. Whether it's through your writing, whether it's through bullying awareness, making a difference. Um, and, and now we have our book called Lukumi and the Schoolyard Bully. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about, uh, about bullying and tips that you can do and then get into tips about writing. But before we do that, we have our ebook of the new book that we'd like to play for you. And you may recognize some of the voices. I don't know, have any of you seen the movie My Big Fat Greek Wedding? Yes. Okay, you know the bride in My Big Fat Greek Wedding, Mia Vardalis? She's the one that narrates the book. And then how about Morgan Freeman? Have you ever heard of Morgan Freeman? Yes. Okay. He was the March of the Penguins, you may remember. I don't know if anyone's going to see the Lego movie that comes out this week. He's in the Lego movie, too. So Morgan Freeman is the voice of the book. So I direct your attention again to the Boomy and the Schoolyard Book. The Boomy and the Schoolyard Book by Nick Katsaris. Narrated by Ian Martellus. Lakumi entered the schoolyard with a huge smile on her face. She couldn't wait to tell her friends some exciting news. Guess what? Lukumi called out. I'm going to have a baby brother. That's great, Marina said. Wow! What are we going to name him? Dean asked, shaking his tail with excitement. How about the Stinky Junior? <laughs> 
is Kiki Chapel. Before Lukumi had a chance to answer, Igor the alligator interrupted. Lukumi was scared of Igor. He was much taller than Lukumi and always pushed everyone around the schoolyard. But a name like Lukumi, Igor said, I can just imagine what your parents are going to call the next lamb. Igor, my name is a Greek word that means sweet, and Lukumi is a type of candy, a jelly candy with powdered sugar all over it, Lukumi said. Really? Igor said. Then you need some powdered sugar on it. Throwing dirt all over Lukumi. Hey, pick on someone your own size. Fistiki said, holding his fists up in the air. I enjoy picking on Lukumi. Or should I call her Lukumumu? That's what you should name your brother. Lukumumu. Igor said as others in the schoolyard laughed. Or how about you coconut? <laughs> he continued and then walked away. Don't let it bother you, Lukumi. Dean said as Marika dusted the dirt from Lukumi's fur. He's just a big bully. Lukumi said in a sad voice. But it still hurts. You should be proud of your name, Marika said. Everyone is different, yet we're really all the same. You shouldn't make fun of someone, especially their name. You shouldn't be a bully because it really isn't cool. You should be accepting of others. That's the golden rule. You guys are the best friends, Lukumi said. The school bell rang and everyone proceeded to math class where Lukumi sits next to Igor every day. As they were taking notes, Igor's pencil broke. Lukumi, could you please give Igor one of your extra pencils? Professor Gus said. Thanks, um, Lukumi. Igor said, taking the pencil out of Lukumi's hands. Later that morning, it was time for gym class. The students were playing basketball. One of Lukumi's favorite sports. Let's go, team, Professor Gus said. Igor neared the net. Lukumi passed the ball. Igor shot and scored. Nice pass, Igor said, wondering why Lukumi passed the ball to him. Next on the schedule was lunch. As the students entered the cafeteria, Fistiki's tummy was growling. Lukumi was eating her grilled cheese sandwich. She then discovered a box of Lukumi candy in her lunchbox that her parents packed for her as a surprise. Lukumi was so excited. Lukumi opened up the box of Lukumi candy and offered a piece to all her friends. This is tasty, Fistiki said with powdered sugar all over his mouth. When Lukumi got to Igor, she paused. He was looking at her differently than he did earlier that morning. Here is a piece of Lukumi candy for you too, Igor, Lukumi said. You do like candy, right? Everybody likes candy, Igor said. I guess we're more alike than I thought. You know, Lukumi is the perfect name for you because you really are sweet. I'm sorry, Lukumi for making fun of you earlier today. Thanks, Igor, Lukumi said. It really is cooler to be nice. You're right, Lukumi. Igor agreed. Everyone is different, yet we're really all the same. I shouldn't make fun of someone, especially their name. I won't be a bully, because it really isn't cool. I will be accepting of others. That's my golden rule. Several weeks later, Lukumi's brother was born, and Lukumi went to the hospital to meet him. He's so cute, Lukumi said. What are we going to name him? Lukumi's dad put his arm around Lukumi, gave her a kiss on the head, and said, Lukumi, we are so blessed to have you in our lives, and we want your baby brother to be just as sweet as you. You're going to call him Lukumi? she questioned. Well, we can't call him Lukumi, too. Her dad answered. But we 
We can't name it Lou. I like that, Lagoon, said. Baby Lou. Lacombe kissed her new brother on the forehead and said, I love you, baby Lou. I promise to be the best big sister. We're going to have so much fun together. I'm going to protect you and be there for you. And I can't wait to share my Lacombe candy with you, too. The end. Thank you. Before we talk a little bit about the book, I want to ask, is Amanda Kirkpatrick here? She, there she is. The re why don't you stand up, Amanda? The reason I'm singling out Amanda is because we had a national contest last year where some of you participated, where you had to draw a new character for the new Lagoon book. And Amanda was one of our top ten national finalists with her illustration of a toucan. So let's have a big round of applause for Amanda. Notice on the dedication page of the book, Amanda's illustration of the toucan appears there on page three of the book. So nice to see you, Amanda. So let's talk about bullying for a minute, and then we'll get we'll get to writing. What what is bullying in your understanding? Yeah. Right. When someone's not being nice to you, and someone's trying to hurt you. Um, why don't we take a look? We have a PowerPoint. I'm working with the National Bullying Prevention Center, and we have some definitions and some information about bullying. And they say bullying is when one person is hurting or harming another, exactly like you said, with words or behavior, and it's being done on purpose, and the person being hurt has a hard time making it stop. And then it says the kids who are doing it have more power. Now power can be that someone's bigger or stronger, like Igor the alligator in the story. Um, or power can also be what the other kids give to the bully. If you noticed in the story, the other kids were laughing when the bully was being made fun of, right? And that's not the right thing to do. If you, if you don't empower the bully by laughing, then you take their power away. So. And bullying can be several different forms. It can be physical, like in the book where Igor threw some dirt on Lakumi. It can be verbal, where Igor was making fun of Lakumi's name, and you should never make fun of someone's name or, or call them names. But what a lot of people don't realize is bullying can also be emotional, or it could be something that you don't do that can hurt someone. And I'll tell you a quick story. Um, our book, Lakumi's Gift, is a true story, and it's about a woman that I met when I used to work at a courthouse. After law school, I worked for a judge. And after two years, the, the term was over, and I come into my office on the last day, and there was a present on my desk. And I had no idea who gave me this present. And I opened it up, and it was a pair of beautiful gold cufflinks. Does anybody know what cufflinks are? It's like, uh, like a button that appears on the end of your shirt. And I, I didn't know who gave me this present. And an hour later, Daisy, the cleaning woman, came into my office and she said, did you like my gift? And I said, Daisy, why did you do this? You shouldn't have, you shouldn't have spent this kind of money on this present. And she said, I gave you this gift because you said good morning to me every day. And I couldn't believe that other people in the office would not say good morning to this wonderful woman who came into my office every day and did me a favor by emptying out my, my waste paper basket. But unfortunately, people are like that. They don't treat people with kindness. They don't say good morning to them. And that's an example of emotional bullying. So remember, kindness follows care if you're always on the right road when you're kind and you're considerate to people. The last type of bullying, which some of you might be getting into now, is uh, with, uh, with the internet and texting, is cyberbullying. You should never text or, or send an email to anyone um, anonymously or with your real name about, about bullying them because that's just not acceptable. Now, who gets bullied? Bullying can happen, who gets bullied rather? Bullying can happen to anyone. There are 13 million kids every year in the United States that get bullied. And I have to tell you, when I was young, when I was about your age, 
someone bullied me about my name. My real name is Nicholas. And I came home that day and I was very upset and I spoke to my parents and told them, I said, why are these people making fun of my name? My parents told me, you know what? Nicholas is a beautiful name. You're named after your grandfather. And, and they made me realize that this bully didn't know what they were talking about and made me feel better about myself. So never let anyone tell you that your name isn't good or that you're not good or have your full name. Don't let them ever let you feel bad about yourself. Because as it says here, bullying is about someone's behavior towards another person. And it can come from anywhere. A girl can bully, a boy can bully. It happens in preschool, high school. It even happens with, with adults. Because you know what happens? The, the young bullies grow up to be adult bullies in the workplace, in the home, and in other places. Now, who else is involved? And this is what I was saying before. It's the spectators that are very important. A lot of people think that the only people involved are the bully and the person being bullied. But a lot of you, I'm sure, have seen bullying in the schoolyard or at school. Who's ever witnessed any type of bullying? I'm sure you all have in some form or another. But you're the ones that can make a big difference because you're the group watching this bullying. And you cannot encourage it. If you see someone being bullied, don't laugh, don't encourage them. And then, what can you do? You can try to be a friend to the person being bullied. What else can you do? What, what else can you do if you see someone being bullied? Yes. Right, you can tell on them to a teacher. And that's very important. A lot of people don't like to tell because they think they're being a tattletale. But there is a difference, okay? Tattling is when you're just trying to get someone in trouble. Telling about something is to try to protect someone and to keep them away from harm. So it's all right to tell if you see bullying. Now, who are the targets of bullying? What can they do? Okay, if you're being bullied, we've already discussed, you can tell someone, your parents, a teacher, or a trusted adult, but know that you don't deserve what's happening to you, okay? Don't let someone take away your self-esteem by bullying them, okay? Because a lot of times, maybe it's the bully that's the one that's insecure. Don't let them take that away from you. And then speak with an adult and develop a plan about how you can respond to the situation. And then, with the help of the adult, you can decide how other students might help. Now, the students who bully, okay, I'm sure that there's a couple of people in this room that have bullied other kids before. But we're going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Maybe you don't realize that what you were doing was bullying. So think of your actions, okay? Think about what you've done, and then understand that your actions are hurting someone. If you've ever called someone a name, or you've ever thrown something at someone, or you said something bad about them, or gossip about them, that's a form of bullying. But you need to understand your actions and realize that it's never okay to hurt someone else. Realize that everyone deserves respect and that differences are a part of this world. Just like the Lukumi bar. Lukumi's name was different. But in the end, Igor the alligator realized even though her name is different, we're really all the same. We're all kids and we're all the same. Now, you, as witnesses, okay, because nobody in this room is, is bullying. As witnesses, what can you do? Okay, when you see someone bullied, speak up. We already said it. Telling is not the same as telling. When students are willing to say they think someone something is wrong, they can make a difference. Let others know you don't accept bullying at your school. If you see bullying, you can tell a grown-up. Second point, reach out. Tell the kid who's being bullied that he or she doesn't deserve to be treated that way. And become their friend. If you see someone bullied, go up to them afterwards. Invite them to have lunch with you. Play a game with them at recess. Be their friend. Make them feel better about themselves. And that is our bullying pledge from the National Bullying Prevention Center. And Mrs. Cherry has a copy of this pledge to give out to you all later, but I'd like you all to recite it out loud, because sometimes it's important to hear the words out loud. So if you can all repeat after me. I am a kid against bullying. I am a kid against bullying. And I will. And I will. Speak up when I see bullying. Speak up when I see bullying. Reach out to others who are bullied. 
and be a friend whenever I see bullying. Be a friend whenever I see bullying. So remember that. Now, now I want to talk to you a little bit about writing. I understand you're all writing books now. So what are some of your books about? Can you tell, let's get three kids. Tell me about what your books are about. Yes. Homework? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Vacations. Vacations. That's a great, great idea. Okay. Yes. Sports. I, I hope that you'll send me some of your stories. I'd love to see some of your books. And I'd like to tell you some tips about writing that I hopefully will, will help you when you write your books. Okay. The first tip is think of an idea. Now it's very important to think of an idea of something you know. It's always best to write about something you know. Like you said, sports or vacation, something you've experienced, something that you know that you can share and, and tell the world about, okay? And the next thing to do is write. Write, write, write. No matter what, if you have an idea and you want to write a story or you want to write a book, just, I always say just get it out on paper. Put it down on paper. Whether it's good or bad, you can always go back and change it later. But you need to get your thoughts out on paper, okay? And this can be any type of writing. It can be a journal, it could be a story, it could be poetry, it could be anything that you want to do or anything you want to say in the written form. So just get it all out, put it down on paper. The next thing is don't get discouraged, okay? And this is a lesson that we learned in the Lagumi Celebrity Cookbook. There's a story at the beginning of the Lagumi Celebrity Cookbook called Lagumi's Secret Ingredient. And in that book, Lagumi is trying to bake the perfect cake. But everything goes wrong. She spills the milk, she drops the eggs, the flour explodes into a cloud of dust all over the kitchen, but she keeps trying, and after several tries, she bakes that perfect cake. And then she learns that the secret ingredient is never give up. So that is important, not only in cooking, but it's also important when you're playing a sport, a musical instrument, when you're doing your homework, and when you're writing your book. And remember, the secret ingredient is never give up. It may not be great at first. In fact, a lot of times, first drafts are horrible. But you've got to get it down on paper, and then you can work on it. And don't get discouraged. The next thing you need to do is take a break. Just like our friends up here taking a break. Remember they say the stormtrooper and the monkey? Um, sometimes you need to get your thoughts out on paper, but then you need to distance yourself from it. Get an idea, write it down on paper, but then take a break. Take a few minutes, take an hour, take a day, take a week, and then come back to it if you have the time. Then come back to it, and what you can do is reread it and edit it, because that's what's so important. That's when your writing starts to get better. You put it down on paper, you take a break, and then you read it and you say, you know what, maybe it doesn't look as bad as I thought, but I could change this word, or I could change this paragraph, or I can add this idea. And when you took that break, maybe you'll think of something. Maybe you'll think of another idea or another thought to put into your story, to put into your, uh, to, to put into your book. So remember, put it down on paper, take a break, and then reread and edit it. And then the last two things are why are you doing this right? Why, why are you putting your thoughts out on paper? And I always say, first, do it for yourself, okay? Don't do it because you think you're going to become a famous author. Don't do it because you think you're going to become rich. Do it because it's something that you want to do for yourself. It's something that you want to memorialize, some thoughts that you had that you want to put down on paper, okay? And then, after you do it for yourself, you can do it for others. You can do a story to entertain. You can do to, to tell a story. You can be a, a newspaper reporter. You can write about events so people can learn about events. Or you can do it as a journal, just for yourself. So, let's go through the points again, okay? First thing is to get your idea, whatever it is. Then write. Write as much as you can. Don't worry about whether it's good or not. Just get it down on paper. Then don't get discouraged. Remember, the secret ingredient is never give up. Take a break. Sit back, 
Let the ideas come to you. It's a process, okay? And then you'll go back and you'll reread and you'll edit. And then once you edit, you'll see your book or your writing start to take shape. And remember, do it for yourself and then do it for other people. Okay, so I'd like to open the floor up to a couple of questions, because I know you have your, your books coming up. Does anybody have any questions about writing or about the writing process? Yes. When did I start the Lukumi books? Is that just, I started the books. Lukumi is now nine years old. Next year is uh, the 10 year anniversary of Lukumi. So the Lukumi books started when our son Constantine was born, and that's when I said I wanted to write this book. So Lukumi is now uh, nine years old. Yes. Great question. How long does it take to write a book? A book, as you saw from the seven points, a book is a process, especially a children's book. When I wrote my novel after law school, that took a long period of time because it's 400 pages. But when you write a children's book, there's not a lot of words. So you have to come up, remember the lessons, you have to come up with the idea first. And that can take some, but usually the idea will just pop in your head. And you'll say, you know what, that's a great idea for the next book. And then you start writing, and you write. But with a children's book, there's also the illustration process. Now, I don't illustrate my own books, but I have an illustrator that I work with very closely. So that process between getting the idea, writing, and then illustrating and making the corrections takes about nine months. And so that's why I try to put out one new book every year. Yes. You, what you do after you write your, the question is where do you send it to be published? There's several ways. You can get a literary agent, who's someone that will take your work and then submit it to publishers. Or on the off chance, usually publishers won't accept work from a person individually, but you could try sending it to a publisher and a publisher might. Or you can publish it yourself. There's a lot of options today to self-publish. Um, or if you want to write like a short story, or a uh, or poetry or whatever. There's a lot of avenues where you could get things published. There's, there's journals where you could write have things published. So there's a lot of different places you can get published. But either a literary agent, or you go to a publisher, or you publish it yourself. Yes. Hmm. My favorite Lagumi book is probably Growing Up with Lagumi because that was my story. That was uh, about doing what you want to do with your life and teaches you, as I said, to believe in yourself. And if you do work hard and believe in yourself, you can accomplish anything. So always remember that whatever it is that you want to be in life, don't let anyone discourage you. A lot of people say, oh, that's too good, especially if it's something out of the box, you know, like being an actor or, you know, or, or going to Mars, being a Mars rover engineer. I mean, whoever would have thought that that girl would live? Now there's no doubt she wants to be a Mars rover engineer. Don't let anyone discourage you. So that's why that's my favorite book, because I try to encourage kids to believe in themselves and to follow their dreams and do whatever it is that they want to be. Yes. I did, I wrote a, uh, a legal thriller, it was a courtroom drama called Crimes of Fire before uh, Lukumi, and then that one was published and I wrote a sequel, which uh, I still have, but I haven't published yet. Yes? A novel like a grown-up book, yes. It was called Crimes of Fire. It was about, uh, I used to work, remember the story I told you about the uh, daisy with the cufflinks? I used to work at a courthouse for a judge, so I saw things uh, in the courtroom every day. I saw all different types of cases like you see on TV. You think this stuff only happens on TV, but it happens every day in the New York courtrooms. So I got inspired, so I wrote a story about a, a legal case that we had for crimes of fire. Yes. The question is, is it fun to write Lukumi books? It is a lot of fun. It's a lot more fun than my day job. <laughs> you know why? Because I get to come and I get to talk to you and I get to, you know, and, and meet the, the, the children that I, that I try to write these books for. 
Um, I get to help out charities like St. Jude Children's Hospital. I get to work with some amazing people like Jennifer Aniston and Morgan Freeman. And it's really been a lot of fun. Yes? How many times do I revise the writing? Is that, you know what? It depends. Um, like I said, don't worry about whether it's good or bad. Just get it out on paper. Uh, you can revise things up until the second that it's published. Um, and you'll always find mistakes. When we did our Lagumi cookbook, there was a, a big heading. Um, we, we broke up the recipes into different, different sections. And one of them was called Lunchtime Favorites. The word was spelled favorites. And we must have looked at it a thousand times. But sure enough, we found the mistake just as we were about to go to press. And that also happens with illustrations. Uh, in Lagumi and the Schoolyard Bully, on the front cover, there's a picture of Igor the alligator. And we proofed it a thousand times. As it was just about to go to press, our son Constantine said, Dad, he goes, look at Igor. He goes, he has fingernails on one hand, but not on the other. So thank you, Constantine, for picking that up. <laughs> and we were able to change the illustration at the last minute. So you're always constantly editing up until the time it gets published. Even now, I have to tell you, as I was looking at the book on screen, I noticed something that I should have changed. But you have to just, sometimes you just have to let it go. That's point eight. Once it's published, just let it go. So why don't we take uh, two more questions. Yes, Jake. How long am I planning to continue the series? Uh, as long as kids like you continue to read them. Uh, it's something that's part of me now. I always say this was something that I was meant to do. Like, so I, that's why I say if there's something that you feel passionate about, that you want to do with your life, do it. Um, and I continue to write these books until, you know, as long as I'm on the screen. Yes. Uh, I do. There's actually two other Lakumi, but the question was, do I have any other ideas for Lakumi books? There's two other books in the works. We're doing a sequel to the cookbook, which is Lakumi's favorite holiday recipe, Celebrity Cookbook. And we have recipes from about 10 of the Disney Channel stars, uh, Zendaya and Bridget Menler and um, uh, a lot of other celebrities like Drew Barrymore and Meryl Streep and Natalie Portman. So that's going to be coming out in about a year. And then we have a, a story called Lagumi and the Basket, which is coming out in the next year or so, which is an Easter story. Uh, all right, one last question. Yes. I would. The question is, would I regret it if I never became an author? Um, thankfully, I did. Thankfully, I had someone in my life like my aunt, who I said was that National Teacher of the Year who encouraged me. So this is what I encourage for parents. You know, if you have a child that has something that they want to do, encourage them. Um, because if I never did become an author, I would have regretted it. So, well, before I go, the last thing that I want to do is I want to leave you with some of the messages from the Lakumi books, which I've talked about. And I want you to hear them. I want you to say them all out loud, okay? The first one is, believe in yourself and dreams come true. Believe in yourself and dreams come true. Second one is, the secret ingredient is never give up. The secret ingredient is never give up. The third one, which is so important with your KFC campaign, Whatever you do, whatever you, do whatever, you say, whatever you say, do something nice for someone today. Do something nice for someone today. And then, on the topic of bullying, I won't be a bully because it really isn't cool. I won't be a bully because it really isn't cool. I will be accepting of others. That's the golden rule. I thank you for your time today. I wish you all the best of luck with your own books. I hope to see some of them. And again, I want to thank Mrs. Cherry for inviting me here today. I had a lot of fun.
give Mr. Kishores another big round of applause.